Field. He jacks it to Brown. Shadow chasing. Too far. Brown trying to tow oh, this one. That's that goes okay. Welcome one and all to the World Flying Discs Federation Under 24 Championship 2023. Two divisions already inked into the annals of history, but we have a matchup in the open division that everybody's been waiting all week long for. Two undefeated teams, the USA against Belgium. Myself, Hannah Penderbury, on the call alongside Liam Grant this fine, slightly grisly afternoon here in the UK. Liam, set the scene for this match. Well, the Americans have their sweeping brushes out, Hannah. They've won gold in mix. They've won gold in women's. Just the Belgians to get through now. We've been antici anticipating this matchup for quite some time now. The two top teams in the Open Division. A lot of hype around this Belgian side. I see both teams undefeated. Nobody, you know, really testing the United States. Had the game against Italy, we thought it was going to be a close one. Ended up being 15-2. Belgium, you know, I think we're in control as well in that pool they had close games universe point against japan okay i think that was probably the big tough match at universe point against australia that didn't really matter though indeed all just kind of you know for playing out the rest of it the uh, usa of course played one game fewer this 15 team strong division with those two pools of seven and eight but looking at the bracket play here cruising through the pack went the usa they talk about kind of having that fury effect the idea of being three years up on your opponent but looking at the semi-finals Liam what really stood out for you for this USA side well they were in cruise control again in the semis you know played Germany in the group stages 59 this time 55 Germany had the Cinderella story and a big win against Canada but USA able to shut down their deep game and took that one with ease this was a very exciting game against Italy a very clean I think it was 6-6 before we saw the first turnover but Belgians are too good in the end. Rossi and Brazazzi stand out for the Italians, but the Belgians are too strong and deserve to be in this final. 
Well, one of the players who was a real big impact for that Belgian side in the semi-finals, of course, Dan de Marais, the player who can currently do no wrong, having such a fantastic form this season was amongst a trio of players who were so pivotal in getting his home club jet set into the European Championship finals in the first event of the season. But this tournament, he has been so on the money, Liam. Just forever free Demare. It's the Don Demare show and we're just living in it, Hannah. We he's been so are. good and he's athletic, he's big, but he's so calm and collective. I've rarely seen a man turn over but we might get a battle of the tens on our hands. Damron versus Damare. That's Benjamin Damron there on your screen. His tournament stats so far, 24 total goals and assists. You can tell which side of the disc he prefers to be on, one of the captains of this side and a real leader on the field. It's rare enough you see a USA team with a, with a stats leader and, and Ben for the other ones kind of head and shoulders above the rest. We saw last iteration with the likes of Matt Hecht and John Randolph that Ben Dameron is orchestrating this offense. Well, he has really been putting in a shift. His coaches did say that Dameron had been really stepping up. He's used to these leadership positions in the club and college scenes, but here out on the field in the under-24s division, he is also rising. But talking about the literal fields underfoot, we saw some slipping in the previous two final gold medal matches because the weather out there is indeed grey. Traditional British summer. Yeah, it's raining cats and dogs at the moment. Everyone with their brollies. Now we see the starting sevens there. A very strong D-line here from the Belgians. Crossing over players already. Toby De Kana, usually an O-line player. Well, we saw him be crossed over very early doors in the semi-final. He's one of the captains, Demaray, so our co the coach has told us that he will play as many points as he wants to as an individual, coming out of a soccer background. Because, of course, we're on the international stage. What we back home just call football. But Lander de Klana there, pulling up the sleeve and getting the first pull into the air. As the Belgians try and grab a medal of a gold colour off of the USA. Of course, this would be their fifth back-to-back -back for the USA Open team. And I'm anticipating this one to be a bloodbath, or maybe more of a mud bath now as the rain has come down and a lot of the grass has been chewed up from the previous two finals. Well, getting us started, USA. Easy flop. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a rare error. Landersman maybe being a little bit shaken by the moment here, Liam. Yeah, sometimes in these big games, almost easier to start on defense, take the pressure off yourself. The USA just fluffing one. Well, breakout player of the Cup season last year. Plays for Colorado Mama Bird. And of course, Johnny Bravo. So an unfortunate error for the man who normally rises high and skies the pack. But Demaray with disc in hand. Around to the corner. The younger of the two, watch out for his older brother, 33. When Belgians come out on offense, fakes the big shot, and indeed a matchup with Damron. To Klana now. Lander looking for options. He sees something he likes in the end zone. I'll tell you what, I didn't even realize we had both brothers on the field. It's a De Klana connection. The gentle boy is going to work. You love to see that brotherly love to start things off. A break for Belgium. What a start to this game. We see the break train already. They are pumped up here. We got a finals on our hands, Hannah. And as I said, you know, coming into this final stadium, first point offense. Just a little bit spooked there. And last man not able to take that one down. Running out options here. Looks for his brother in the end zone. And that is a rifling flick hook. Easy catch in the end for Toby De Krana. Well, this is a mirror image of what we saw happen in the women's final in the previous game. A break to start us off. So we know that there is plenty of depth in this constellation of a USA Open team. They've got star studded talent across the roster. They've got the depth to pull themselves back, but that is a fantastic dream start for Belgium. Lannis de Kran is going to stay out there and pull this one. He's got his first assist of the game. Man coming from Ghent. I know there's a lot of people watching in Vos. 
I think there's a, a pub there. Lots of watch parties happening all over Belgium and the USA. Shout out to Yelena's crew there. Second brick pull. Well, hopefully something that the Belgians can start to do a little bit better. Jacques Nissen there is going to get ideal field performance, well, field position even. Of course, no stranger to the youth development scenes. Played under 20s to the French that got a gold medal back in 2018. And of course, was on that COVID interruptus under 20s program for the USA. But swinging across to the far side, Rutledge Smith into Damron. USA grinding for these points. This is good person coverage from the Belgians. Oh, slinky inside from Gordon. McKnight, with lots of loft underneath it, fades to that far side away from the defender. There, yeah, Gordon pops back again. Damron now getting himself involved. An aspirational jump to try and get inbounds, but backing him up, the cable guy himself making the connection, Orion Cable the second goal for the USA. Dameron and Cable combined there. You can see looking to their talisman, Ben Dameron there, when got broken on the first point. Coming out on that side stack, isolating him off the first play. A few people slipping on their feet there, but Dameron solid as always. Actually met him last night. I went over to the Irish to have a few beers with him and bumped into Ben Dameron. He wasn't having a beer, just to clarify, but uh, they're staying in, in the same accommodation as the Irish had a chat with him. Reminded me he'd actually commentated one of his games back in 2018 with the AT Aliens. Well, excellent stuff. Well, it's only it, one of the things that I really enjoyed about the Tom Storney tournament was not only did they have the uh, alcoholic beers being served on the sidelines, but they also had the Brugge Sport. So the, uh, there's a, obviously the Brugge Sport, you normally have it's an icon of that Belgian tournament. If you've never ever been, we highly recommend it. It's a really fun show. And where, of course, this under-24s team first showed us what they could do for the Belgian side. Jonkers on the underneath to De Krane. He gets lots of free yards in the underneath space because he's such a demon downfield. Looking for that, there is indeed lots of slipping and sliding action. Both teams are used to playing in inclement weather conditions. It's a ripper to Dekana, but a pick off from the defence. Buckholtz with the block. And he ends up a little bit of a mud bath himself, Toby Dekana. It is very cut up the grass, and a lot of people are going to end up on their backs. Oh, Yonkers inches away from gaining the disc back. A spin move for Turner Allen, those two. An excellent matchup to watch. The length of Allen. A just target to counter Yonkers. His movement across the field, Fernandez. It's just easy, easy stuff for the USA. You on? Inside. This is just. <gasps> Where on earth was Dan de Murray hiding in that pocket, just sneaking through? Like a thief in the night, just comes up and. Blocks that one out, he does that so well, sets the trap, earns it back for his team. To the corner being pinned, big poach in the lane, can they find the free target? Thunderbick. Slinky around shot, this time to Osterlink, who throws it into the lap of the corner, but he slides away. Acres of separation in the end zone. The celebration before the goal. Calvin Stoughton, the Colorado man, picks in the third goal and a break for the USA to respond. He's got that Colorado confidence. A few Colorado men on this team. And I saw Johnny Bravo have an amazing Nationals run. It was that kind of steeze and swagger that they used to their advantage. Two turns involving Toby De Crana here, and I think actually the, the surface had a lot to do with it. This throw may be a little undercooked, but Toby De Crana on the ground, I believe twice in that point. And Murray, such awareness of defense. Went for the sly tackle there, but USA wastes no time punching it in. Some slippy, slidey action there. 
Valerio there on the coaching set, one of two, versus Daryl Stanley, of course, who's just put his uh, iconic binoculars swaggering around by his hip. Of course, a trio of coaches for the USA, the fifth cycle for head boat coach Bob Pryor, alongside David Allison and Daryl Stanley. Of course, we loved having a part of our team back in the World Games coverage last year. Cunning out, pops back to Yonkers. Bumalal looking for options in the centre. Dunray just casually trotting there. There's a little bit of tape on his right knee. He's played every point so far, Hannah. I wonder how many points he's going to take off this game, if any. I do believe we have some statisticians counting, and thus far there is there has been one without him on. But that might be wrong. Tana de Bonton. Sofian looking for options, has Yonkers behind. Bumalau with a stutter step, but oh, look at how free the swing is over the far side. Van Mullen, the pianist himself. De Marais has Bumalau grinding. There is a slippage, but Yonkers races up line. Oh, it's an easy push pass. Yonkers is always so casual. The creativity of that man cannot be denied, and neither can the Belgian goal. 2 2. A nice little push pass to finish things off. Let's look at some history for this open division, Liam. Yeah, I remember I called this game that USA Canada back in 2015. That was a lot of fun. USA taking over Gag and Shadow. This was a, a very exciting game in Perth. USA took half, or sorry, I should say, Italy took half over USA, but USA finished it off. Jack Williams, being the big star of that matchup. It was the John Randolph show in Heidelberg. The Canadians couldn't stop them there, but the Belgians here undefeated in this tournament. Indeed, thus far, actually, didn't appear back in the 2010 iteration in Florence of this, but it used to be called under 23s back in the day. But uh, as you say, Liam, not suffered a single defeat thus far. The only team to ever beat a USA team in any under 24s division was, of course, Japan women on London soil back in 2015. Pretty sure Belgium have bricked every single pole. Yep, that is not a single one in bounds thus far. Is, is it a tactic at this point, you'd wonder? I don't think so. <laughs> I think you really do want to be giving yourself the rundown to pin it on that back end zone line, which we did see the Belgians able to execute yesterday in much windier conditions, but that's a ripper of a backhand that's going to sail away over the top of all of the defenders and into the waiting hands of Josh Singleton. Showing his value there, incredible goal. Very smooth, clean offense from USA. You see Belgium coming out with a very flat force trying to stop that hook, but they could not stop it there. And we're on serve here. You can see the USA players getting pumped up. Oh, and deservedly so. That was a huge throw from the captain, Calvin Brown. Cal Foley, slow man. Yeah, that was a big buttery biscuit. You saw the help of Van Leberger trying to play some cover defense, but the throw just on the money. And celebrating in style. Singleton, one of, I believe, five dark side chaps on this open side. Yeah, took part in that three piece for UNC. I have to say, it's a humidity in the air will be very familiar to any of those North Carolina players. If you've ever visited the Triangle area, and I recommend you do, it's got wonderful people who reside there. It is certainly an impact on the playing. Acres of space, but it's going to be a big shot to Dan de Marais. A similar play and a similar stylish catch. Just so much air underneath that, doing what he does best and just punching one in. A quick response to the two-pass score of the USA. That took six, but that was a ripper into the backfield. Bit of deja vu there, almost exactly the same way the USA drew it up. A big backhand hook to the back of the end zone. And you can see both of these teams have a lot of swagger. 
So often you see players putting their hands up, claiming the disc before they caught it. Both teams have done it so far. And De Marais, just an incredible player. Love this throw. No hesitation from Bonton. And the Sheriff of Nottingham himself patrolling the end zone. Well, I like the uh, heads up defense there, though, from Leo Gordon. To see that one developing, has a go at kind of, you know, making the run down. Realizes there's no opportunity there to make a play, but that's what you have to do. You have to support your teammates when those big discs go up, because certainly if there have been any air underneath that one, that's surely going to be out of bounds again on that pull there, Liam. Maybe they're playing a game with the fans on the far sideline. They've definitely been playing up to the fans, both teams. We have some entertainers on the field. I think that was one thing guaranteed with this final. It was plenty of entertainment. Well, definitely both of these teams like the wow factor style of Ultimate. And one break apiece also keeping things interesting. Other than that nail biter semi final that the Belgians had against the Italians, where they turned it over just once the whole game for the Belgian O line. So the USA exploiting their more fallibility, as you see in the far sideline. Singleton once more out on the field with the connection to Landersman. Oh, that's a lovely gainer on the near side. Brown. No big passes, just a slinker through to Dameron. There's a fall from Orion Cable in the end zone you can see how difficult the conditions are underfoot the theme this week has been the difficult conditions of the wind but so still today Dameron surveying the options as they develop patience required from the USA to grind this one in Singleton with a pop to Dameron and he just gallops over the line but they're going to call him not quite in McKnight Oh, lefty dish high into the sky. Puts one out for Josh Singleton on a platter. And that's two in a row for Singleton coming out on oath. Another clean hold. You see both teams finding their rhythm here. Hasn't been a turnover in quite some time. I put my money on a turnover coming with someone slipping. We've seen it a lot downfield. People ending up on their backside in this difficult conditions here on the grass. Thus far, we saw the first turnover, of course, come off a hider. So maybe there was a stumble. They tried to jump up. We see McKnight here again. A riser for Singleton. So everything on serve. The fates decided that USA would have the advantage coming into this matchup. If we do go toe to toe and trade, it will be another fifth. USA gold medal in the open division here at the under 24 level but of course this Belgian program has been training since 2015 together back at the EYUC under 17 level and this may be a little bit of revenge Liam for of course that very tight game back in 2018 when the Belgians took fourth well, Yonkers being matched up with Cable height for height Cable of course six foot five Nice one to Demaray, far side. From Moyerson. Hi to Yonkers. So creative, but that's a bit wonky. But goodness gracious me, the eyesight. 2020 vision for Tuba de Krana. And he just looks so confident. Look at that man stride across the pitch. Are you not entertained, Anna? I'm not sure if that was the receiver he was looking for, but. He's got magnets for hands, just finds a way to take that one in. Well, and the connections for these Belgian players are exceptionally well honed. They've been getting lots of reps together. A few of them will be playing on the seniors side in two weeks time. And of course, a, lot of them, a big cluster of athletes from the Mooncatchers who rose to in the international stage last season. Two on the board there for Ben Yonkers. Shout out to his brother Ref, currently recovering from injury. Very high in the stall count, they look for the scuba. I'm not sure this is exactly how Ben Yonkers imagined. I think he was going for Bon Tom's at the other side of the end zone there, but Crano obliges and coach Carol Stanley doing some thinking here. 
You know, he said he's going to throw out different looks against this Belgian O-line. They're on defense now, but he'll take some time to crunch some numbers. And this might be an inbounds pull. Well, at long last, look at the hang time on that. Goodness me, Calvin Brown just trapped on the front of his own end zone line. A split stack from the Americans. Often looking for Dameron on that initiation play, but can't get it off. And we see a zone from the Belgians. It did work out for them and paid some dividends against the Italians. Just trying to play containment and perhaps trying to frustrate the USA. Quick passes back to Brown. Slink through the middle to Dameron. There's plenty of options over the top if they want to have a go at the shots, and they have the throwing creds to do so. The USA have been one of the few or least impacted by the breezy conditions out in Nottingham thus far this tournament. They just continued to swing patiently. A little bit low energy in the backfield as we see a transition from the Belgians. So they could just run their systems. A little bit of a stumble from the cleats of Rutter Smith. What kind of call? Looks like the Belgians have really slowed them down here, and you see that kind of passive handler marks at the start, just allowing USA to swing. Now a little more aggressive. Just trying to make this American side make lots and lots of passes. Don't let them score quickly. Well, absolutely, otherwise you'll see this game race away and then think, what on earth hit you? This is some of the finest we've seen thus far against the USA. Of course, they did cruise through the pack. Although the Germans did have a pretty tight game with them until that fifth point, but it all just mentally went wrong, they said to us, as a huge explosion, Louis Betrancourt, the man who used to play soccer, now plays ultimate, started in August last year, and a timeout from Dan Demaray. What do you think of that call, Liam? I love it, Betrancourt. They're just, just taking a timeout to celebrate the layout. That's all they're doing there, getting pumped up here. Veteran core comes flying across, getting horizontal. Sensational play. One of those athletes there that they brought into this system. He started playing ultimate because he had a few friends that played, and he started watching the Mooncatchers in Cincinnati. And that six-part series, basically a Netflix series we made last year of the Mooncatchers, and after watching that Cinderella story, that's where he joined Ultimate. Well, the Cinderella story may well continue. US leaving Stephen for a piece. Timeout call in live play from Dan de Marais after an explosion from Louis Betancourt. Usually not a fan of these timeouts, but it is Dan de Marais, so he can do no wrong. So it must be the right thing to do. Right? I don't know, Liam. We may well see him come back down to human status or maybe semi god. You know, hemi demi god, that kind of action. Certainly having a fantastic season this year. That one's going to be so low and an easy picking for Van Dameron. And a squandered opportunity. A lot of these big deep shots for the Belgians have been quite low. Damron now racing off. Clear dish. Great communication there. The crowd don't like it too much. The choo choo starts to rise. So you see a stoppage with the disc in the hands of Matthew McKnight. Yeah, him and Afori again. They know each other pretty well in this point. You have to call it. Who's made the call? He made the call because every time he runs, he runs into me. Okay, it's everyone's responsibility to play by the rules and cause unnecessary contact, okay? Yeah, I would say he's done this in past games as well. So. Okay. Okay, I'll contest. Okay. Foul contested, take a deep breath, rein it in, all right? Okay, what? Okay. He's watching. Yeah. Okay. Take a deep breath, rein it in, okay? Both of you are unhappy with this. All right, what's the stall in? Zero. Okay. The intensity mounting here and those players getting to know each other pretty well now at this stage. 
Well, it just goes to show the scouting, doesn't it? He's done this in games before, and I don't believe those two athletes have ever matched up on an ultimate field. Still count starting to rise, a scuba over the top, but an extra footwork just to make sure Rutledge Smith clutching the overhead goal, and the US hold on to that one, 5-4. You can feel the electricity in the air right now, Hannah. I'm not just talking about the risk of thunderstorms, I mean the metaphorical electricity in the air. The conversation continues on the sideline, I think. McKnight there and the game advisor. Well, it was one of the kind of goals for the USA Open team to do exceptionally well in the spirit standings. They said they just wanted to be at the top of the pack for the teams in the championship bracket. Of course, the USA mixed having one spirit earlier. We saw that today they have two shiny medals, making that lovely. The sound of success walking towards you. Matthew McKnight with a moon catchers-esque scuba over the top there. Well, it's absolutely fine to do it. We have certainly slippery conditions, so you have to go with every catch or two if you can. And of course, you can see some gloves out on the pitches. But uh, it's a legitimate choice. There is not too much wind. You really can open up every throw in the toolkit here in Nottingham. So the Belgians look to respond. De Marais. Doesn't like the look from Osterlink. Takes the completely poached off far side handlet. You will say have been happy to give them that option. And Van Mullen just sits there patiently, playing that role, allowing the stars to ascend on Tom far sideline. Ben Yonkers has the momentum, has the car in the end zone. You can see he thought really hard about that hammer. Osterlink puts one low though, the sliding catch for Tobi de Krana and a hold for Belgium. Every point feels electric in these stages, Liam. Beautiful offense yet again from Belgium and that's what this USA D-line don't want to happen. Don't let them score easily and quickly. That allows the likes of Don Demaray to be able to cross over onto D-line, play a lot of points. You want to make it a hard grind but too easy there for the Belgians. Oh, you can see the whole time you say Belgium playing with three handlers you look at the Toby de Krana package here. Been a tyrant in the end zone all tournament long. Four goals already. Some coming easier than others. I'll tell you about his athletic training. He literally lives in the gym because he works there. He's uh, really ascended. He's always been a big name on the European stage and in the genius programs. His reads are exceptional. It's very rare that you'll see anybody going up against him and getting the disc in their hands. But now becoming a real powerhouse of an athlete as he, as he ages up. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him do damage in the seniors division. And of course, this is what this under-24s is all about, giving that big game championship experience to players so that they can do damage and bring our sport to a whole nother level in the future years to come. But the USA trying to find another level of their execution. They've turned it over one too many times, I think, for their liking, but certainly they don't have the best connections because they'd only arrived a week before the tournament, Liam. An accepted foul there. A zone look here from the Belgians. Very passive, allowing them to swing. USA playing with four handlers here, essentially. And Belgium like, yeah, okay, swing, but we want you to make a lot of passes in this rainy game. And I like that as an idea. Creativity on the far side, high for Rutledge Schmidt. We've seen plenty of power blades. There's a lot of contact there on the mark. Better Van Bogart. Says Mark has been physical, might be a bit of an understatement. Two <laughs> foul calls called him already in this point. Well, just sticking with this zone, which is indeed making these over the top shots look deeply uninviting. USA now starting to sort of close the field a little bit. Because of course, that pack of defenders around the front also really pressuring on the throws but certainly we haven't seen any usa zone yet it's a hammer soaring through the sky lovely find 
to Landersman. Has a think about the Ripper and <laughs> nearly spooks Damron. Of course, fabulous reactions and a melt to match coverage from the Belgians. See them picking up their assignments now as we emerge into the final third of the field. Damron on the inside. Nice flush around to stop the easy pass, but the quickness, the decision making of Josh Singleton. What a throw that was to Landersman. Barely was in his hands. Magnificent offense again from the Americans. Cool, calm, collected. Had to execute some big over the top throws there, but they're brave enough to do it. And then outside the end zone, the likes of Dameron Singleton just take over. Quick, dishy passes, an easy goal in the end. You can see what the Belgian team is trying to do. Playing that zone to start. Stopping the set plays from USA. They, they often have a lot of set plays drawn up, particularly isolating Dameron at the start. So nullifying them, allowing them to swing a bit, make it a halfway, and then play more honest defense. But uh, haven't been able to get a turn off them in that point. So they have been coming, the, t the break chances. So there is some hope here for this Belgian side. The USA, as we said, not quite the same level of connections with each other. These athletes are used to playing against each other at the club and college level. They have some pairings that they've been running through their lines. Whereas these Belgians know each other so well, coming up the big core of them playing together all the way through from the under 17 divisions. Of course, the Belgian ultimate team also a very small country. They get to hang out and see each other and play against each other as well at lots of tournaments. De Kana on the far side. Bontemps having a little bit of trouble getting open, but now free on the underneath. Gauten van den Broek. And acres of room, and it allows him to put one up into the air, but that's going to be out of bounds. The attempt, oh my goodness gracious me! Did that work? I didn't see his feet, but the Belgian celebrating a greatest from Tommy de Kana. What just happened? What just happened? I'm sure the USA are going to call it out, but the Belgians are celebrating like it's a goal. Don't want to discuss this one. It was a crazy play, whatever happened. Well, the crowd don't like the call at all, saying that wasn't good enough, because my, oh my, I said, so tricky. It does look like that foot was on the line when he left the pitch, but we do have a replay monitor, so we'll see what the call is. I'm pretty sure it was out. <laughs> Not to deflate the big balloon here. I'd love to celebrate and say that was an incredible greatest, but from what I'm, from what I can see, I think it was out. 44 on the, on the field is calling out. Oh, sorry, on USA is calling out. One of the best efforts you'll ever see at a greatest. Oh, you definitely did that. I think you also jumped from the inside. So they think you jumped from outside. I don't think I have a perspective. It's a way in. Out call. I think it was call. Our camera out. confirmed out. Out call on video camera. This can say it was where it went out. Hang on. He hasn't accepted necessarily. Uh, yeah, well, everybody says it. They looked at the camera. I don't, I don't think I have a perspective. Okay. I don't want to talk about it. So Okay, out, accepted. Out, accepted. Well, I love the fact that the Belgians celebrated it regardless. The absolute spice coming out of that number 33, Tova de Kana. Yeah, the top scorer at the World Ultimate Club Championships last year, but I don't think this one's going to count. But it looked amazing anyway, Liam, and we, we got it on film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably the greatest the play ever in the final if that was to stand, but... So it left the field quite quickly on that throw, Liam. Yeah, and Would you he's like jumping from an out-of-bounds position that it stayed out the whole time. contact doesn't count, so I think it will come in for USA about half of the field. Yeah, but if you're not... If you're not let me think about this. If you are going for a greatest 
in a gold medal match, you are not looking at your feet. You're just looking at that disc, thinking if you can make it happen. And Tobi Dikana inches away from giving us one of the most sensational scores of the tournament, if not the year. But it's going to be the USA, half field to go. Pignone with the wonderful mystical moustache that he has. He's been so damaging on the D-line for the USA. Pignone through. Just easy stuff again for this USA side. The patience. Is there going to be any footwork? No, Cable just keeps it simple. I'll tell you what. I get my numbers wrong. That's not. That's Sickles with the assist. And a break for USA. A massive turning point in the game. They take a two-point lead. What was almost the greatest, greatest ever ends up in a break for USA. See the kick spike there. From Conieris. And a big credit to him. He actually created a Google eSights all about the USA Open team. So a player that's really been invested in this program. Had a massive turning point in the game. This, the inches that decide these things. Absolutely. Well, the fans, I think, probably favoring the underdog helium. Yeah, a lot of European hopes on the backs of these Belgian players, and that's just too easy in the end. For USA, you can see what it means, means the likes of you and I think most of all we just want a good game and they've given us that so far. Oh, absolutely, and here in the booth that is exactly what we want. There is no bias in the call. We just want to see the stars ascend. Yonkers being given quite a soft mark. Is trying to put the big target on. Great footwork from the mark of uh, Turner Allen. To Kana with it now. Lots of players just stumbling in the downfield. Some kind of call. Confusion about whether it was a call. I think just Juan Thompson ending up on the ground. Ooh. So Demaray, lovely footwork to attack and create space. Makes the hammer dishes back to Yonkers. Vandenbroek. Again, the USA happy for the Belgians to have the underneath space. They go just walking down the pitch. Van Muller has a travel call, so that one is going to come back. All the way back. Didn't see the travel myself there from Don Demaray. Man hailing from Leuven. See, absolutely taking over the game at times for the Belgian side. So back to Van Mullen. It's Camille Van Mullen. There's plenty of siblings on the uh, Belgian ultimate scene and on this team as well. Bonton, back to Yonkers. Things starting to become a little bit static now. The poachers not being taken, just grinding themselves forward on the backs of their stars. Van Mullen. Look at that poach off of Osterlink right in the back. You can see Usain just completely poaching off the less used players of his Belgian side. Well, you say less used. Otterlink was the one that actually reeled in that semi-final winnings goal. So certainly someone who's involved in this game. De Marais, round to Yonkers. Everyone grinding for the near sideline. There's a flying bid, collecting plenty of dirt. Oh, you dirty boy! Gaten Vandenbroek dropping the overhead. An opportunity to break for half. They're great pressure from USA clogging the lanes, forcing a risky biscuit from the Belgians. While you say forcing, I don't think that was a particularly high stall for the Belgians, just a curious choice. Turner Allen, a little stumble there, just you can see this field getting churned up by the intensity of the play. Miller. One 
into the expansive space. There's a little stumble from Ostling, but applies the mark. Oh, casual single-handed grab for Gordon. Allen now. Oh, that's such a nice backhand. Beautiful, smooth and silky into the path of KJ Kendrick Koo. And that is half for USA, taking a commanding lead now. Belgium need to be pushing in those O points. They're not doing it right now. A bit flustered here at the Belgian side. And USA have their tails in the air now. They'll just have to keep their patience and poise, I think, for Belgium. Their O-line looks so great in the semi-final, but just allowing themselves to be put, sort of stumble to the pressure of this USA side. So this match will continue half-time here in the open finals of the under 24s division as the USA lead 8-5 over Belgium. time ever from the golden sandy blankets of Portimao, Portugal. Ula and Ulti TV bring you the World Beach Ultimate Club Championship 2024. The best club teams in the world will converge on the Portuguese Algarve. With expectations for upwards of 150 teams, this promises to be a tournament worth bucket listing. Whether on the sands or watching the action from your screen, WBUCC 2024 is a tournament not to be missed. I will arise and go soon to the Isle of Emerald Green and watch my mighty heroes go to battle on the screen where the ocean kisses Ireland, Shannon's tears of joy fill. That lovely Lady Limit invites us to the show. From mighty glens and rugged hills, bays and braes raise a sawcha. Ganairi on boher yak, agus cave nila falcha. Half time in the gold medal matchup between the USA, who have a three point lead on their opponents, the Belgian Open team. And we have a sideline interview with the coach, Ine Lankrit. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi. In a very different conditions today than we've seen throughout the week. Throughout the week was very windy, today quite wet, and particularly the surface of the field. Has that been a factor for your players? It's a factor for both teams. So um, we told them earlier at the start of the game, the pitch is going to be slippery. Just be aware of it. It's going to be the same for the other team. So um, let's not be uh, fuzzy about it. We're Belgians. We can handle any kind of weather. Well, you are indeed used to some inclement conditions, as you say, four seasons in a single day. So talk to us about the level of frustration, the pressure that the US is putting under. What's been your message to your team to try and keep things oh. a bit more conservative in the second half? Well, about, uh, let's um, say we're enjoying fully the fact that we are in the finals of a World Cup um, and we are able to give a game to the USA. So I think a bit of frustration is not more than normal in those uh, conditions. So um, let's see, second half, new half, let's take a breather and uh, anything can happen. We saw in that last possession that uh, USA players were often poaching off your handlers, poaching off a lot of players. Is there any tactical adjustments you're going to make going into the uh, second probably. half? Probably. 
probably going to do that, yes. Valerio is talking to the O-line as we speak, so you'll see. Well, we will indeed wait and see. Thank you so much Thank for you. that interview, in and good luck for the second half. So stats of this game, the break chances that the USA have given to the Belgians higher than we expected probably, Liam. They've looked so good this tournament. I'm just really impressed with, you know, three breaks from four chances, clinical USA D-line. And that's maybe a difference at times between these two teams. Well, we will have to see how this matchup will develop in the second half. Could be a very different story. Do not go anywhere. Welcome to Nottingham and half time here at the Old World Under 24 Flying Disc Federation Championship 2023 and the Belgians on the charge to try and grab the lead back from the USA. It's traditional sloppy conditions on this pitch. We've had a relatively dry week, Liam, but now is a real different story. Yeah, this venue known as the wind farm, turning into the mud farm. We do with a pair of Wellington boots out there, the Belgians at times. They can borrow mine, I've brought some. I'm literally wearing them right now. Look at that. Well, I tell you what, we are used to the conditions being of this kind. In fact, actually, I myself was walking around the fields at Tom's Tawny in Bruges, of course, the home of the Freeze Bees, in my boots. I brought them alongside to commentate that event because it's no stranger. And of course, the European finals back in 2021, which was hosted in Bruges, was a real slot fest of itself, more like ice skating with a disc than cutting. Siarta going to pull now for the Americans. It always picks up a little bit of the grass, kind of throws in the air, reads the conditions. The Pittsburgh temper man has been nailing these pulls. He absolutely has. Well, whatever the rituals are, you don't mess with them. And Yonkers central position over to Damare. Double cutting from Bonton and Van den Broek. But Bonton continues through into that hand of space. The flexibility of the Belgian O-line. They are all happy to play in whatever spot you want them to. And that's a massive spot on the far sideline to Van den Broek. Van Mullen now streaking away, picking up a defender. Well, his trouble. Bonton. Into Yonkers. There is some emerging from Osterling, but it's going to be Demaray going to attack the deep space, but the fabulous flying block, Scott Heyman, the Pittsburgh man, says no. Access denied. He's beginning exclusive lounge access for racking up the air miles here. Launches himself into the sky. Well, a fabulous flying performance, and this an opportunity to extend the lead. Pinot with the disc. I see a six-person vertical stack here from the Americans. They're just very close stacking, I think. A kind of initiation out of the front. Another slip down field, but what a ripper block for Vandenbroek. A foul being called, and he's not happy about that. Vandenbroek showing he can take flight as well. Looked clean to me initially. It seemed like he had an angle to attack it. The, uh, the moment when you just touched each other. It was before. It was before the moment you ran through my leg and and knocked my face together, and I tripped because of that. Because of the contact that you created. You have a perspective of. The I don't have a perspective in it. Trip. I saw you. Couldn't see, see what the, the that. American player is saying there, Johnny Sickles. I had, you, I had you sealed out if you, if you, if you, if you, if you didn't shoot me, that would be, I would have held my position. I think I was first in this. You, you, you were first in this. Because you tripped me. I'm not sure. 
Okay. Good. Okay. Just, okay. Do we think we're going to come to resolution? No. Okay. okay. Foul contest. So it goes back. And the booze coming from the crowd. I think everyone's seeing Vandenbroek making a clean bid, but the contact came earlier on in the play. Sickles saying he got tripped, and you can see where he's coming from. I really do, Liam. I agree with you. There was indeed that contact on the back foot which caused the stumble, but regardless, a heroic play from Gundam. Eaton <laughs> Vandenbroek, even, but the USA with the disc now. Can they grab themselves a break into the second half to really put pressure on this Belgian side? Cunieris with the disc around to Pignon. Sickles being denied that under. Ooh, another attempt for the block. That's what you have to do there to try and grind it back. Heyman, push pass for Pignoni. Coming through now, it's Yuan. Looking for options. This is really fabulous containment, but where on earth was the mark? Frankie Fernandez going to the deep space. He makes the launch, but it just tips off his fingers. The crowd is turning up the heat now. Well, Fernandez losing that one like he lost all 11 of his college IDs back for Harvard Redline. Loft on that one, though. Rising up. Osterlink has Yonkers underneath. Oh, but goes for the casual one-handed grab, and it drops. Can't be doing that, son. Not in a gold medal match. Sickles now to Pignon. No one anywhere near. Big old poaching, sagging defense. A foul call. Another unfortunate error. Benjamin Yonkers that time. It seemed like he slipped just before it. Lost balance. He always sticks out one hand to try and grab onto the disc. Good test. No good test. Okay. okay. So who, you call foul. Yeah. It's uncontested. This back in on here on whatever the stall was, max six. So disc in here. Thank God, ball there, game advisor. Just allowing everything to remain cordial. And he'll trot off field. And sickles with the disc. Back in play. Peeling off the front stack, but just a safe one back to Pignon. Sickles, lovely up line. Immediately threatens that backhand break side. Oh, again, someone with zero mark, Conieris. No pick call. Danger space. Allowing the US to throw whatever they want, but it's a feisty flick into the back pocket. Fernandez collects the goal. Another break for USA, and it's the American break train rolling now. Momentum with the Americans as we see an arrow of a shot to the end zone hitting Frankie Fernandez. Robin Hood will be proud of that one. Well, big tram energy for the USA. The lack of attention there from Yonkers getting punished. Oh, now we're into the back corner. A beautiful shot, a brave throw from Sickles, who was involved in a couple of calls at that point, and he is pumped up right now. And a timeout called. And disturbingly so. You can see the coaching trio for the USA there. Bob Creer, David out, Allison and Daryl Stanley, who've been really working the fields out here, scouting all week long, as they like to do. Got some advice, actually, from uh, Bob Cryer earlier, as you see him onto his shot there. How to get better at coaching. Just learn how to create really meaningful practices. Focus on one thing. But the focus right there, apparent, as we have this time out here. But don't go anywhere, this game will continue the USA in charge.
second half here, the fans getting excited, being G'd up by the Belgians, who are currently down several breaks in this second half. You see them cleaning the muck off their boots, and they've suffered a lot more consequences of slip and slides, more so than the Americans. They certainly have, and they're going to have to put on quite the comeback show on this show pitch number one. Kind of reminiscent of one of the favourite games that didn't make it in front of our screen this tournament, Liam, which is between the New Zealand Open team and the Irish Open team. Yeah, a massive comeback in that game, and that's what these Belgians are going to need. And, you know, the Irish in that game they used to, to sideline help the fans, and nobody there to feel that pull. And an exceptional pull it was, about a metre shy of the back line. Certainly a big compare and contrast against the D-line of the Belgians. Tobit de Kahn is going to be escaped by that one, but backing him up, of course, Dan de Marais. De Malau, listen, stutter stepping from Bonton to try and escape the mark. The US have the athleticism there, happy to run both ways. Taking away certain options of the bodies, but really trying to nullify both sides. Big poach off from Ita Chang in the centre from Gerton van den Broek. It's a stack very far away. Van den Broek, though, is there behind Demaray. De Kranen now. Just hanging out in the deep spaces after Morrison. Mr. Belgians just trying to connect. Possibility for a switch there, but Morrison. Yeah, the always someone playing last man back for this USA side have been stopping the deep options. Oh, the pressure gets into the eyes and heart of Van den Pluck. Wasn't the nicest shot, and what a counter attack. Just lofting one up to the back corner. It's the number 27, KJ Kendrick Goo. With another USA break. That is now five unanswered. This is a very similar feeling to what happened to the Germans in semi finals, Liam. Kendrick Goo take a bow. Incredible performance there. As him that came flying across, don't think he actually got a touch on that D, but put the Belgian player off. The Belgian fans still believe here, though. That is spicy hammer and just crew coming flying across, put Vandenbroek off and asleep at the wheel now, Belgium capitalizing so quickly. Cal Polly, slow player. He's collected plenty of grub on that lovely, what was pristine during the warm up USA jersey. He's living in. Christchurch in New Zealand now, so maybe a few of the Kiwis cheering the Americans on. Well, every single player on this USA side, which will be a surprise to pretty much nobody, has been playing since their high school days. We've got a good couple of youth champions and club champions. This is the first time I've seen a Belgium O-line without Benjamin Yonkers on it. You know, involved in two turnovers last few points, maybe just giving him a little rest to settle himself. Lander de Kahn, a big D-man coming out on offense, so changing up the lines to try and just give players a rest. So de Kahn the younger playing the role that Yonkers might otherwise. Osterlink into Bonton. Well, we already mentioned, but this could be a very similar feeling for the Belgians as the Germans had. They allowed the USA to really get into the head. The pressure cracked. But that is cool and calm and under control for De Marais. Pops back to the crown. Bonton available but collects a little bit of a mark. Osterlink fully available for the super dump. USA sideline very happy to see the Belgians take that deep reset. Bonton now. Hammer over the top. 
lost the leg to the Kanu to connect it, but a travel call. We'll pop that one back, called by the board to six, Tristan Yarta. Very fair matchup for Toby de Kana. We saw Osterlink hanging back there at the start of this point. I think it was a bad idea being coached. Ends up losing yards. That time pushing down the field, be a threat. You get the hammer to him. The whole time that that third handler for the Belgians is being coached, and we need to capitalize on it more. Van Mullen. Laser shot on the far side for de Kana. Again, those big poachers off, not really being used. Got to be more confident. De Marais has Bontai in front of him, but that sag off in the lane, being given, gifted to Sickles. An inside slicer, though, will put one more on the board for the Belgians, and that is a sigh of relief. Dan De Marais is going to go down without a fight. Has to break the mark there with Sickles in the lane. Has to fake out the two Americans to get that shot off. A bizarre offensive strategy for Belgium. The post player just going 20 yards behind the disc. America very happy to let them throw backwards. And it's all about now Belgium is using that six or seven player in the line. A lot of time they're running through three or four players. The way America is playing now, you have to use everyone on the field. Coach in the lane there. Demaray is still able to squeeze it through. His balance and form is fantastic. A couple of shimmies to create the space. It is really an interesting one for Saul Sickles' positions there because actually you are so giving that backwards reset. It's not being lit up and used to be expansive down the field. So actually, if Sickles is there, he can do more. He can be more aggressive. He can sit really in that lane communicate with the mark, allow them to completely nullify that backwards pass with their body. But certainly that is a, sometimes a risky idea. High <laughs> power knife. Only seen those a couple of times out on the fields. But we love the creativity from Nissan. And a second one in a row. Just slicing through the Belgian zone. Having them up like a Christmas turkey right now. Those blades very effective for the Americans. Oh, and a third one. That's a bit feistier now to Cable. Opens up a high release. Brown gets it knocked out of the hand, but the foul is called and immediately accepted by Declan. Violation signaled in the backfield. You can help in the middle. Brown checking his back in. Big one with lots of air underneath it. On the attack of the defense, but what a huge rip down. Felix Moran, the ego man, grabbing it. Look out below as he comes up with that grab. A lot of pressure. A stall out is being called. And it was definitely a hopeful pass. Plenty of pressure being applied by the Belgians. Um, I disagree, I, so I think I got it off, but I also think you went 9-10, there was no second there. No, 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 I can call I can contest on the basis of the fast count, on the, on the last count, right? Yes, you can. Yes, you don't think you fast counted? I think I said 9-10, and then you But that's not a second. You said that, but, it, okay, contest. Okay. There's no way. Okay. Stall out contested, then. Yeah, you... The disc got spiked, just double check it. Hard to know whether okay. it was 10 That's seconds right. or not, but didn't get the game advisor's opinion on that one. Would like to maybe hear what they said. It will be coming in at stall eight. Well, if they can convincingly have a defensive stand here, this will put the Belgians back in control. There is a huge layout play to try and deny, but that one was just Jack Nissen's all day. Jock Nissen has made a name for himself in the US and in Europe. Played a lot with the French national team at youth level as well, and not phased by the flying Belgian. And 
USA punching a clean hold. And a, a very few teams use the blade as effectively outdoors. Often you see people maybe throwing through that zone defense with the hammer, but they were blading it down the field and veteran core trying his best to get the block and he flops onto his back, disappointed himself with an amazing bid, but the Americans very hot to handle right now. Absolutely, that was just an athletic grind to the open side for Jacques Nissen. Of course, no stranger to the youth programs, but a Frenchman, so has represented both the USA and France in his career. Of course, we were very disappointed not to see any French teams at the under-24s level. And in fact, the reason why the Belgians are even here, Liam, is because it was close to home. If this was further afield, we would have been denied this Belgian team even entering. Again, USA completely poaching off Bumala this time. You see him get it on the sideline now. Well, Bumala, not the kind of player who's going to sit and wait in the backfield for too long. Oh, but a stumble there for Dakana and a smackdown D for Calvin Stoughton. Pressure is starting to mount on this Belgian side, and USA are not letting up. Oh, I love that high flick pass. And exposing the brave side of the field is double happiness bookends for Calvin Stoughton and the USA celebrate emphatic style. The game running away from the Belgian side there again, another slip capitalized on by the USA. And Belgium trying to keep their heads up. I think that's the designated spike disc from the USA. I'm surprised it's still in one piece after this week. Well, it's got a big hole right in the middle of it. But I, I, I appreciate that look. You, if you're going to bring a disc to spike, then, you know, that's fair enough. As long as you don't do it in the face of your opponent. That's it. Demaray had slipped there. It ends up. Singleton roasts Demaray to the end zone. And often you see that, but shows the prowess of this USA side. Stoughton there, got the goal. He looks like he's going to stay out in the field. I like that when you know, a player gets a block, it's a goal. The adrenaline's running high. They got a spring in their step. Put them back out there. Go get another one. Like this to try and keep some heads alive and above water, but the USA are pumping all kinds of H2O into this game, sloughing up the pitch. You see another stumble there from Bonton, right in front of the disc, Mambullen. One into space for Yonkers. Calling for the underneath. Bonton, oh, nearly taken away. Great hands from Stoughton, avoiding contact, but making that look very dicey indeed. Yonkers just popping up. Back on the field, off those early errors, Van Mullen. You know, so really pushing the Belgians to just only underneath. We haven't seen them throw a deep shot in quite some time. Yonkers to Bonton. There's some activation across the field. It rises high in the sky, and so does David Akana. Seven to the 12 of the USA, a five-point lead all about both sides of the set of the half-time break, Liam. That's a little bit of energy for this battered Belgian side. Finally able to find some space in the end zone. That's a more classic look from the Belgian side. Bontemps leading across to the Krana. Quite often there's someone else minding the house. Stopping those deep shots so effectively, the USA, but they can't stop that one. Well, the frustration starting to seep into the body language of the Belgians. This is not their best day at the office, but I tell you what, Toby de Kran is still on form. You can't help but think, Liam, what different game this would have been if that attempt had happened with the greatest. Toby de Kran ascending into orbit there. That's the kind of big plays this Belgian side need if they want to get back into this game. Got some serious ops, that young man.
but if indeed that had come off that greatest, you'd have to, have to think this could have been a very different game energy-wise as we see a fine Belgian pull giving a longer field, lengthening things out here for the USA. Brown in central position. A little jump for Singleton, but all workman stuff. Damron underneath now. It's been a while since we've said that man's name. Rutledge Smith. Good communication for the hand set of the US. But throwing into the poach. Oh my goodness gracious me, what a setup for Georges Donnet. And he calls an injury. Georges Donnet with the double D there has to swipe at it twice just to be sure. A massive moment now for Belgium. For Looks like they will be bringing on Ben Yonkers to try and orchestrate this D-line offense. We saw an injury sub on for Ben Yonkers in a similar position in the Italian semi-final for Belgium. Certainly somebody you want to bring on to try and throw some magic for the creativity. But all simplicity for this moment. Number eight. As Yonkers around, the pick call seemed fair, it seemed to flash across the front of the stack. They badly need this point, Hannah. They're trying to get back into this game, get some kind of momentum swinging their way. Violation called. Well, this for the break. It's going to have to be a historic comeback, but we are waiting on the edges of our seats. The Murray flashing fakes and finds one for Yonkers. Loving that match against Ben Dameron against Dan Demaray. Yonkers. Oh, what a great effort there from Orion Cable. Just a readjustment of that compression bandage on his right knee. Yonkers to the corner. Another stumble upfield, but Demaray now. If anything, if you're playing out here on this particular field, you sort of want to squeeze yourself to the sidelines to give yourself a bit more sure footing. You can see the colour difference on our screens as they churn up this turf. Yonkers now, again, the USA pushing the Belgians into the backfield. There is separation, and it's going to overthrow Demaray. Shocking. Demaray so frustrated there with his teammate. Landers the corner. You can see just getting frustrated there by them going backwards. He felt the deep shot was coming, but not executed well. Far too much juice. It's a lovely inside, but it should have been held for another two seconds. See a split stack again, kind of isolating two players on the open side there. Lindesman to Damron. Cable taking up towards the deep space. That's going to be just the round to Singleton. Followed up nicely. Good timing in connection that's been developed over the course of two weeks. The US had one training program to see a pick call. So one weekend, way back home. Lots of Skype calls. But just the one week ahead of this championship where well, they didn't have any friendlies, just played with each other. Brown slicing inside backhand break. Now some space for Smith. Jink move, exploiting the face mark. Jacques Nissan pops himself back, repositioned. Oh, that's a lot of contact on the back, but Damron will just stand up. Walk away. You can see the emotion on that man, though. Yeah, bad days with that from Cameron, not afraid to let him know how he felt about it. It almost looked like he tried to bail out of that lay. Just kind of a, a bad decision, as you say, which does happen. Smith to Damron, just posting one through the letterbox. Oh no, that's a lovely slinky throw. A rainbow 
over the head of the defence and into the lap of Josh Singleton. You can see the energy coming off of Ben Dameron right now. He's almost got steam. He's fired up and ready to go and just a calm little dishy scuba over the top. Bringing the fire, Ben Dameron. See, the USA players quick to clean their boots. A lot of mud on the boots of all these players, and I think it's hurt the Belgium a lot more than it's hurt the Americans. It hasn't been the deciding factor though in this game. It's been clinical offense from the Americans, just mounting pressure on the Belgians and forcing them to make bad decisions. I think with the, the O line for the USA, it's been really. About the errors that have come have generally been throws that are quirky in terms of the, the positioning of them or just straight drops. There haven't been too many like overthrows into space. There have been some undercooking, but generally speaking, they have been very ruthless with the disc. But the stumbling, Lady Luck, clearly not favoring the Belgians right now. And again, no, Ben Yonkers on the goal line for Belgium. Mixing up their lines again, just because I think they have to. They've, not everyone can play every point, except for this man. Well, and at playing against the USA in the gold medal match, this is a really big moment to use for your younger players. Stan van Hecke, the number three, just flashing in front of the disc there, coming onto this line. Kana looking for options. Nearly a miscommunication, but Van Mullen makes the adjustment. De Marais. Van Hecke going towards that deep space, picking up two defenders for his trouble. Why on earth didn't he throw that to Osterling? But retaining possession nonetheless. Kana grinding in that centre pocket. The pass tally is rising so high in this possession. That's 15 so far. Kana now has Bonton. Looking for the give go. No one making a dagger attack into that deep space when De Kana gets it on the line with momentum. I think it's the USA poaching that's nullifying that deep shot. I really agree with that travel call, nor do I think it really affected play. Well, there was not really much of a mark too near him, but I guess... No, I, I am wrong. There was a mark there. But after that negative yards throw, indeed, did it make too much difference? Panica, the 19-year-old from Bruges, back to Bonton. It's really wonderful to see Bonton back on the field. He was recovering from an injury ahead of this tournament, did not play the London invite with the Open Seniors team the week previous. Floating one for De Marais. Van Mullen now from Malal. Discouraging the throw. Osterlink now. This is just such wonderful containment from the USA. The Belgians just want to have another clean O point. They were so good at the beginning in the early stages of this match, but the adjustments just been so good. Bonton, cool, collected over the defence, flying, but you've got to have a go. What a bit that was for the number 32, Albert Yuan. Van Hecke with the goal and a clean hole from Belgium. USA doing so well to clog, poach off, switch in the lane. Stifling the Belgian offense, but using their poaches effectively there. Belgium, they needed it more, but it's all about getting breaks now. Nobody's even got to double digits on this USA team. They'll be hoping to at least do that. It's all or nothing now for the Belgians. Well, the second place looks like it will go back to the nation of Belgium at this stage. As you mentioned, Liam, the only opponents they would be to break into double digits with the opportunity. The USA were managed.
to hold in pool play the Germans to 15-9 along with Great Britain. And everyone else quite considerably much lower. To Canada readying for the pull. Showing us the strength in that big right arm. And what a pull it is. Is it going to stay in bounds? Yep. Much better than the early stages. Racing through this. Jack puts it back. Very solid work from the Belgian zone. Nissen choosing not to go for the blades over the top. The players a little bit deeper downfield this time. Smith indicates to get a little bit of momentum from the backfield with the legs. Nissen. There we go. There's the blade. He's chopping up everywhere legs and throws give go give go oh what a find on the far sideline the near side pocket and that is an easy goal clutch for Felix Morin the Belgians split in two once again I don't think I've ever seen a final where a blade has been used so effectively and finding that little soft spot in the center of this Belgian zone and capitalizing on it Donna Marie can't make the impact he wants in that defensive point and this USA O-line is look unstoppable at the moment now we are one point away from another gold medal for the USA under 24 open team here so Morin grabbing that last goal one of the players who's really impressed the coach for how he's been able to flex and find different styles here amongst his teammates See, just moving this so quickly once they got that blade to the center. And, you know, the USA O-line has broken once, just the very first point of the end game, but since then, they've rarely turned over at all. Well, that possession, they've shot me sent. Brownie in poetry in motion. So this, the first opportunity for the US to take it away with a break. The Belgians will continue to grind out here in the sludge. De Marais back to Van Mullen Botton. Looks him off. Still count starts to reach the high numbers, but escapes to De Krana. Call upfield. Foul call by Bumalau. Bit of a heated discussion going on here. Accepted foul, so we'll come in and stall one with Toby De Kana. De Kana around, a great readjustment and a knee slide, guitar hero style for De Marais. Power slide like that in the game before, just shows how soft the surface is. Someone needs to create a gif of De Marais with a guitar in his hand rather than a disc, for sure. But slipping and a sliding go the Belgians. Again, pinned so effectively. Frustrated. Bonton. It's an easy weight in the centre there. Moyosen. Shovel toss pass. Got to go for that creativity against this US outfit. A hammer into Bonton. What a grab just shy of the goal line. Very indoorsy style for the gold medalist from Lithuania last season in December. A gigantic grab from Bontoms. That a spicy hammer thrown up. And a big brave catch. Just shy of the end zone line. Further the stoppage. Accepted foul. So, Demaray and De Kana in the end zone, Bonton just throws a beautiful lead. My goodness, that is absolutely gorgeous. Sofiane Bonton, poised. 
exquisite throw to finish that point off. They've got their hold, but it's game point USA. Well, a traditional moon play there, Liam. Yeah, putting on Mary Poppins mode there as he hangs up into the air and takes that one down. Has the touch throw out to space for Demaray. And you can see exactly what this means right now to the Belgians. Head coach Nilan Fiat in the centre in the red. Her first experience at this level. Welcome to the chess match. Well, Tom's had a fantastic final so far. He'll probably be looking to add a block in this point. Have possession to win the game now, USA. We aren't going anywhere. See the USA O-line choosing not to huddle up here, just having a bit of a throw about. Well, you've got so many chances at your match points. If the Belgians can go on a defensive stand here, it will create some real sauciness. But at the moment, I can't say I see them closing out the USA six on a run. But. What a game that would be. I think I might have to go home and look, you know, maybe local the visit, visit the local hospital to get some rehydration if that do, does happen. But of course, it's been such a wonderfully run tournament. In the UK Ultimate Team. But this to keep the dream alive for Belgium. It's a lovely pull, but offsides gives the brick. For the USA, what a shame, Liam. Yeah, great pull as well. And Landon Decrane turns to the crowd and he's almost has a little giggle. You see a split stack again here from the USA, looking to isolate. Well, almost, at times. almost skipping up to the mark there, Rutledge Smith, like a spring lamb in these very spring like conditions here for Nottingham. Singleton underneath. Some space developing upfield. You've got Orion Cable on the pitch, who's been dominating in the deep space all tournament long. Underneath, though, quick night. Stoppage. Bit of a collision in the centre field and an injury call from Belgium. He wants to step up to the plate, take part in this game point. Who's come onto the field? Damron. As the 2 2 from the sideline tries to get into the minds of the USA, they look calm and cool. Smith fakes and throws the inside break, and it's going to be Den Ben Damron to finish us off and get the gold medal winning catch. The fifth in a row for the USA open side in the under 24s division. My goodness, that was quite the performance. Ben Damron turning on the jet boosters and burning Danda Murray for the goal to win the game. Danda Murray just left in the end zone, confused as to what just happened. 59 the final score just that one break in the start of the game for belgium and then the usa o-line unstoppable from then on well it was a commendable effort from the belgians the adjustments that were made the stuffing off into the lanes the pitch conditions it just was such a credible quality side all tournament long no team able to get it into double digits against the USA Open team at this tournament. And you can see the passion, the joy that it meant for this side. Their coaches said that that was the one word they wanted this game to emphasize is the joy. And I think that final possession, Liam, said it all. The way they were on the line, the way they trotted up to that brick mark, you could really see the enjoyment that this US under 24 Open side has had at this tournament. Well, the sweeping brushes are out now. It's a clean sweep for USA. They'll be getting their gold medal soon, and the mixed team and the women's team already have them. It's going to be a heavier flight back home to America with all those medals on board. 
the mixed team also picking up the spirit medal as well. You can hear the mixed players walking around now as their medals clink and clank off each other. Incredible work from Coach Daryl Stanley. He's supposedly retiring after this season. He's told me he's retired before though, so won't be surprised if we see him back in some shape or form. But a defensive masterclass there from Daryl Stanley. I liked how they poached off the non-active players on this Belgium side and really punished them for not using all seven on the field. Well, the USA are indeed your champions at this world label for the open division, women's and mixed. And really just wonderful scenes. You see the coaches there getting big cuddles. Bob Pryor, Daryl Stanley and David Allison. But the stats from this game, double the number of turnovers for Belgium but one extra clean hold. So they did have opportunities there, look into the game, but really that's end of the first half, Liam, just really demoralized them. Yeah, incredible performance from the USA. The o line just turning over three times, but Belgium only even capitalized on it once. And a 100% record for the conversion rate for the D-line of the USA. When the Belgians turned, they never got it back. No redemptions, no recovered points whatsoever. So really, it was a game all about exquisite defense off to all the coaches and of course all the players they'll have to go back to playing against each other when they get back to the states Liam but if you were going to put Dan de Marais in any club team in the US we might see some invitations for that kind of contract what team would you put him in we did have a chat to the coaches and ask as to who Dan de Marais you would put them in with see him getting into any US club team side. Looks like we'll have an interview with KJ Koo coming up now in a minute. Indeed, we do have a sideline interview. Congratulations, KJ. That was quite the game. You've got a lot of mud on your shirt. What was it like trying to keep your balance on that pitch? Uh, it was pretty tough. I, obviously, compared to some of the last days we were playing here, the fields are pretty hard, but as soon as the rain started coming down, I think maybe about 11 o'clock this morning, it uh, got pretty muddy. So our coaches were like, don't commit so hard on the first few jab steps. Just uh, wait till the real move is made and try and make the move then because it's, yeah, it's a little bit sli slippery out there. He managed to get, I believe, four break points in a row there in the kind of middle of the game. What was your defensive coach, Daryl Stanley, telling you and what worked well for that D-line? I think off the first few points, um, we know that they wanted to shoot and uh, put it behind us so we were playing over the top a lot of the time but as the game went on they started to make adjustments and bring some of their their big deep cutters under so we started to tighten up and play back hip and back pocket a little bit more each time and uh, they started to feel that pressure and obviously uh, we didn't generate all of our blocks but um, more throws uh, often equals a higher turnover rate so they just said keep on providing pressure. Well, of course, this being the last of the genius or youth divisions even, you've had quite the storied youth career yourself, KJ. Are there any messages that you have for your former teammates or the future stars coming through your own programs? Uh, I don't know. No easy buckets. Cody Mose would always say that. So uh, I know that uh, hopefully some of the slow folks back at home are watching, and uh, I want them to know that all of them could be here someday, and anyone else could too. So no easy buckets. Work hard. and. You know, have fun while you're doing it as well. So it must be such a fun experience to, you know, play with some of your rivals on the same team. What it's been like making new friends? How has the atmosphere been on camp? Oh my gosh, it's unbelievable. You show up, well, I wasn't there for the first training camp, so I showed up uh, the week before the game started here for the first time. And you, uh, when you're counting off on the line, it's like, uh, okay, so someone else take one, yep, someone else take two. I'll, uh, yeah, I don't know who I'm going to take here because everyone on the line is so good at uh, most of the things that they do, and so you got to kind of pick your poison when you're, when you're playing against them all. But it's, it's so much fun. They're all uh, wonderful people off the field and on the field as well, so supportive, and I couldn't have asked for a better team to do it with. So, KJ, another clean sweep for the U.S. Maybe you guys need to get some curling action on board with some brooms or something. But do you think there was any difference from watching the first two games ahead of this one and being, using that vibe? The first two games? Sorry. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I don't know. Like, I think that uh, last night we uh, we set a certain mentality going into the game, um, and it was basically just like this week has been fleeting and fast, and you if you uh, if you blink you'll miss it. And I think a lot of us were like kind of head down, charging into this final, but. Um, we all took a sec to just like sit outside, sit with our teammates, and just enjoy being here because this is definitely a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So it was just like enjoy being here, and then when you're on the field, the, uh, the intensity and the heart will come. Well, KJ, we will keep our eyes open to see you ascend to stages in the rest of your storied career, I'm sure. But enjoy this evening. Congratulations again. and Well-deserved performance. Go celebrate with your team. Yeah, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Well, that was quite the show from the USA. They came out strong, they traded for a while, but they really just pulled away. Incredible defensive plays coming from the USA. Belgium tried at times, but had the greatest attempt, didn't work. Things is not going to Belgium's way today. Indeed, they just slipped and slid all over the pitch. The grisly conditions here in Nottingham, typical British summer, but there was still some flair in amongst the pack. The USA, such throwing prowess throughout the game. This one meant so much to the team that name was Joyce. Rids all over the field, but realistically, they just had the extra depth in their skill set. The passion, the fire, the final score here in the Open Division. US gold across the board. The Open team 59 over Belgium. But thank you so much to everybody involved in this World Federation World Flying Disc Federation 2023 Under 24 Championships. The executive producer, Tim Rockwood, Ulti World editor in chief, Charlie Eisenhood, lead producer and Ulti World director of video himself. Aidan Shapiro Layton is lead director. Game producers, Lindsay Sue, Dana Madsen, executive in charge of production, vice president of the WFDF. Brian Gissel, all of our camera operators, Noah Brinkworth, Naylan Converse, Reed Hankinson, Nicholas Ho, Lucia Pakorova, Kelly Rusin, Felix Sharpo, Danny Strasser, Lucia Way, our drone pilot high in the skies, Justin Vernecki, and Ulti World Director of Technology. In the backfield is Orion Burt. Statisticians working tirelessly out on the field, David Oxendale and Shepo Taela, and of course our commentary crew. Lorcan Murray, the coordinator, the man in charge of us here in the booth, the Rachel Douglas, Liam Grant, Georgina Morrison, Hannah Penderbury and Benjamin Rees. For UK Ultimate, the tournament director, Luke Chobyashevich, CEO, Cy Hill, and all of our WFDF crew, of course, we have Kate Ferguson, our treasurer, Thomas Grimsbaum, our secretary, Secretary General Volker Bernardi, and himself, Rob Norch. That's been it for us here today at the Under-24 Divisions. World Championships are closed. It's a clean sweep for the USA once again. We'll see you on the other side.